Hey friends, this is part two of a video I did recently where I lavishly praised Fuji and listed all the reasons why I love them as a company. But no company is perfect and while I do love Fuji and most of the content of this channel revolves around the experience of shooting with Fuji gear, I definitely have a few frustrations. My purpose in sharing this list though isn't to manufacture contradictory content for views um, or to um, be hard or unfair on Fuji in any way. It is to be fair and as unbiased as I can be with representing the other side of the coin in, in an idealistic sense, I want to and hope to contribute to the brand that I, that I love and I want to see improved. Um, but if you're the type of person that gets upset when people criticize gear that you've chosen to spend your hard-earned cash on, then this one will probably frustrate you. So trigger warning, feel free to skip this video if you're a Fuji fan person. But if you do choose to watch, remember I shoot Fuji. I love Fuji, but I'm not so enamored with Fuji that I'm not willing to talk about some of the problems as I see it um, that I would love to see changed or improved. And my first complaint about the Fuji X platform is how close Fuji is to being king of the video world, specifically in content creation with mirrorless cameras, but they are not quite there. With the release of the X-T4, um, they have released, in my opinion, what is probably the best value for money of any professional video creation tool in existence. However, for as many strides Fuji is making in the world of video offerings, there are still some pretty big hurdles that they need to overcome. And one of the biggest is the horrible state of the Fuji lens lineup for video. I have shot now with all but one Fuji X lens and I have owned more than half of the Fuji X lenses at one point or another. I have shot video photos nearly daily for over four years and spoken to you nearly weekly about the experience. So I'd like to think that I've earned a little bit of street cred when it comes to um, the Fuji lens light up and, um, and why I think that the video side of things is really just lackluster. Now I realize that there is the Fujinon MK18-55 T 2.9, which is, I understand, a phenomenal lens specifically designed for professional videographers, but that's also an over 3,000 US dollar lens and absolutely not designed for the needs of run and gun content creation types like me and like many of you. So what we're left with is a selection of Fuji lenses specifically designed for photography. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I can hear many of you um, who only shoot photography on Fuji and who despise all of the video adv advancements that Fuji is making. I can hear you sharpening your pitchforks out there and you're about ready to turn to the comments um, with the usual arguments, arguments like wishing that Fuji would stop investing in R&D and product features that support video, thus making photography cameras more expensive for those of you who do not care about video. My friends, I hear you. The concern is valid and I'm sure that it's frustrating to see so much focus on video when it's not something that you care about. However, hear me out. For Fuji to stay relevant and afloat in a marketplace which isn't being kind to photographers only, especially at the DSLR mirrorless level, Fuji must compete or drift into obscurity. The sad fact of the matter is that one of the biggest reasons younger photographers are interested in, in newer mirrorless devices is because of their video capabilities, specifically for quality content that they cannot create on their smartphones. So for better or for worse, Fuji is in the video game now in a major way. However, their lenses just suck for video. Virtually all the fast aperture primes, especially the older ones like the 35.14, the 14mm 2.8, they're really loud um, when they focus. In addition, virtually all of the larger glass lenses have this jittery or jumping focus in autofocus, making it just a non-starter if you want professional looking, pulling of focus situations. Now, real videographers out there will tell you you shouldn't be relying on a camera to focus anyway. But for many of us and the type of content that we create, it's not just more convenient. There's just no other really way of doing it. We don't have a first assistant to pull focus for us. A lot of times we aren't um, directly behind the camera or in a situation where we can dial in focus like we want to. Um, and so 
Canon and Sony, they've done a better job of providing smooth focusing transitions in many of their lenses, so that's what many people use. Um, and while the F2 variety of Fuji lenses um, improve on this, they have quiet focus and they have smoother focusing and um, better focusing transitions, they also suffer from focus breathing, making them a no-go for video situations where professional quality and dynamic focus is a must. So for me, and for many of you, um, we look forward to a day where Fuji makes some video-centric lenses and some, um, and just does a better job of smoothing out the focus and exposure transitions in their devices. My number two issue with Fuji is the X-Trans sensor. Oh man, if I didn't trigger some of you already, I'm sure that I will hear about it now. Last month I did a blind test video comparing the X-Trans sensor output to the Bayer inside of Fuji brand um, devices specifically. And that was fun. Um, and a quick tabulation did show that more people definitely preferred the output of X-Trans, albeit you have to keep in mind that that was with higher megapixel devices, better quality devices, um, but the, um, over the Bayer sensors. Also keep in mind that that was raw, processed in Darktable. I'm quite sure that if I had used Lightroom, or as I like to refer to it in conjunction with X-Trans files, Lightworms, if I'd used that, um, the difference would have gone the other way. And for me, this represents an issue. I have no problem with the idea of X-Trans, but I personally love using Lightroom a lot, and um, most other people do as well. It's still the standard for photo editing, and it's frustrating that it's absolutely the worst way to edit a Fuji X RAW file. Yes, even with the enhanced detail Lightroom workaround, which is, um, at best, an extra process or step in the process that sucks to go through, and at worst, not actually a whole lot better um, with particularly noisy Fuji RAW files, in my opinion. But it's all because of that silly X-Trans mosaic filter, um, which, yeah, maybe Adobe could do a better job. Maybe they could figure out how Capture One is able to do the demosaicing. De I don't know. It's neither here nor there. Um, my major issue is that it's not necessary. The resolution is now so high that it's not possible for the human eye to tell the difference between the sharpness of a Bayer sensor output with an anti-alias filter and an X-Trans sensor without one. Many of you will disagree with me, I know you will, but this in this video it's my opinion and I can only tell you what I've seen, what I've experienced. Um, others will say that the, the grain of the X-Trans output looks more film-like. And hey, if you like it, if you really can see an empirical difference between Bayer and X-Trans with all other things being equal, which we can't really test easily, by the way, but at zoom levels also that are not completely ridiculous, if you really can see a significant difference and if you like the look more, then that makes sense. Shoot with X-Trans while you can because I believe it'll go away. But for me, I don't think it's better at all. I, I think the purpose for which it was first served no longer applies to modern high capacity megapixel sensors. And I just wanna use my Fuji RAW files in Lightroom without paying the price when sharpening high noise files. And this is actually represents a very fundamental reason why I love shooting with the GFX 50R. I prefer a Bayer filter array and I prefer editing in Lightroom, like I said, without the noise issues. But I do have my workarounds for Fuji X bodies. If you're interested in my unique image processing workflow, I'm actually coming out with a workshop on that really soon, which will be available to all channel members um, who join at the student level and above along with um, other workshops that I have. So take a look at that offering in the join us button down below. Even more than my workshops, you'll also get access to more update videos from Danae and I, member calls, photo critiques, also for those of you who want more help with your photography. So come hang out with us. My third issue though with Fuji is that they refuse to make a full frame camera. And I can certainly understand why. The difficulty to, in supporting multiple platforms with a limited sized team that they have, it would spread them too thin. And I can certainly understand the problem that that would create also with lenses. It takes time to develop a body of lenses for a new system. On the other hand, now that they have said they plan to open up their lens API um, to third party lens creators, what if they joined the L Alliance with Sigma, Panasonic, and Leica? They'd hit the ground running with some of those lens offerings, um, giving them time to create lenses of their own. But in the meantime, all the folks who say they can't shoot Fuji because they have to have full frame cameras, they are suddenly given pause. 
Now I get it that Fuji has their medium format and APS-C systems, and that's a lot of multitasking, but there's a massive market of photography enthusiasts that do not see medium format as an up upgrade path from APS-C. While I'm quite certain that Fuji will eventually have an incredible medium format offering which can compete with full frame on more than just image quality, we're talking in autofocus and continuous high-speed shooting for starters. In the meantime, people, they just don't think of medium format for enthusiast photography and even a lot of professionals. The market has been trained since the year 2000, that's 20 years of digital photography, that full frame is what you need if you want to be taken seriously. Even if most people watching this episode, my subscribers, um, those of you who shoot for the love of photography and who don't believe that the technology makes the art, even if we know that that's not true, that you, that you don't have to have a full frame camera to have legitimacy, it's still what most people seem to think. And um, if for no other reason than to take away that reason why someone might not take Fuji seriously, I'd love to see a full frame offering. Number four. Color profiles. It seems inconsistent to me that a company so grounded in film photography would limit the older cameras with um, newer color profiles. Fuji is constantly making updates to older bodies. The X-T2, um, an older body now, was just updated a few months ago, but Fuji refuses to put in new color profiles into their older bodies. But in the film days, all of the 35mm cameras shot with all the 35mm films. But Fuji, by limiting cameras that can shoot with filmic profiles that they create, they're embracing a closed system that requires photo enthusiasts to throw away their old camera and update to a new one if they want to shoot with classic uh, negative, for instance. Now, any idiot that can see that, the, that there's marketing value in doing that, um, but also any sort of idiot can figure out that it costs Fuji very little to include an update, which is just a file to an older device to unlock the power of a new filmic profile. So it's not in keeping with the spirit uh, of the tradition. And to me, that, that makes it not in keeping with the spirit of Fuji cameras, and it's a real shame. What I wish Fuji would lead with is something the cinema industry has done forever, and that is the idea of a LUT. Make those filmic profiles more like LUTs and allow us to update our older Fuji devices ourselves if you want to, if it's too much trouble to push out an update from Fuji every time. When newer Fuji shooters come to me and they ask me why they can't shoot with classic chrome um, on their older bodies, bodies that they've scraped their money together to buy on the used market, and I have to tell them that they, they can't, and, <laughs> and there's not even a really good reason why they can't, I feel sort of bad about that, and I'm not a Fuji employee. Um, I know Fuji has to innovate to stay in business, but to me, offering profiles inspired by film and using that as a carrot on a stick to help motivate a camera upgrade doesn't feel good to me, and I'd love to see Fuji rethink that one at least. My number four issue with Fuji is it's still durability. For And I've harped on this before. I was really hoping that we could see this issue get put to bed with the X-Pro3 and the X-T4. We keep seeing improvements. Um, and I've mentioned in the past that I thought that we were there. And while our X-T3 has survived much abuse and kept on ticking um, after all this time, uh, and the X-T4, uh, I really thought man, finally the X-T4 is not going to have any issues. That's It already has. I've barely used that shutter mechanism. Mostly I've just used it for video and the shutter button is already um, not, not working. It's sticking. Um, just like the X-T2 did for a lot of you and me, we dealt with that way back in the day for X-T2. I realize that this is just one anecdote, but I hear these anecdotes all day. Too many issues like the X-100V having heat issues or grinding issues or some X-Pro3 shipping with bent titanium. Our X-T3, while it did survive the beating we inflicted on it, we're, we are hard on our cameras, um, right from the beginning it would often suffer from this green flickering when we would take photos, um, and I'd he heard others report on it as well. Um, it was just brief and every once in a while, but it was a little distracting. It wasn't a big enough deal that I wanted to send it to support because they're hard to deal with. More on that in a second. But it all points to a slightly subpar quality control practices on Fuji's part um, that I didn't experience when I shot with Canon. But it's not just limited to what they allow out of factory, it's also my number five issue with Fuji. It's dealing with their servicing center. Now I have a lot of experience with North America servicing department, but zero experience with Canada's, Australia's, Japan's, London's, etc. So I can only talk about what it's like in the US and um, 
it's not great. <laughs> Every time I send something, um, in the, the first thing I have to do is fill out a form on the computer, but then I print it. They don't, I don't actually submit it to them online. Um, now, I, I get it. you got to have something physical to identify me, the camera, and the issues that it's having, but they literally have no online management system that provides customer access. Once I send them my printed form about the issue with the gear, then the wait begins. To date, I have sent four lenses, um, the X-T2 twice, um, the X100T, the X100S, um, and in each case, I had to call them after sometimes multiple weeks, and in one case, more than a month after not getting any email or calls from them, just so that I could figure out what was going on with my order and to take any action. Several times I was told, oh, we hadn't heard whether you wanted to proceed with the servicing, so we haven't started. Now, it very well may be my fault. Maybe they sent an email and it went to spam. Maybe they tried to call and I was out of service range. Maybe, but I'm not usually that irresponsible. And for it to happen, not once, not twice, but three or four times at least, it's, it's not a great track record. Um, and it points to some issues. In every case, this could have been avoided with an online tracking system of some kind where I can just fill out my issue online, get a case number, refer back to that before printing the service request and sending that out with the device. But when I've asked about this, and I've asked several times, um, I'm told that that's not something that they're looking into at all. Now, I've heard rumors, um, though I'm not sure, but it's true, that the service center here in the US and in other countries are outsourced, that it's not part of Fuji proper. If anyone could substantiate that I'd love to know but either way as someone who works in product design myself I understand that great user experiences go much much deeper than the product itself it's the design of your customer experience and it incorporates the entire life cycle of the product if there is a point of failure at any point in that process it gives a customer a reason to jump ship and guys for a photographer professional semi-professional content creator or even hobbyist to be without them their gear for weeks or even months is about as good an excuse as any that I can think of to switch to something else. I love Fuji. I want to see Fuji succeed. To me, this is a huge opportunity for improvement. Whew, okay, I just want to check in with you guys. This is kind of negative. How are you doing? <laughs> you Fuji shooters that love Fuji, are you hanging in there? Uh, I know that for a lot of you, this probably isn't easy to hear. For you Sony shooters, you're probably sitting back eating the popcorn, loving every word that I'm sharing. Um, but you guys will get through this. Number five, my fifth issue with Fuji is, and um, this is actually not just with Fuji, but most camera brands, that's mobile support. I know Fuji has done a lot of work to make their Fuji camera app more reliable, and I also know that the mobile app support with digital cameras in general has long been a thorn in virtually every brand's side. Fuji's no different. Um, they are not a software company, and their apps reflect that. But the sad fact is that it's it's still not a great experience. Tethering a mobile device to the physical device is, um, it's leagues better than where it was at one time, but still not there. But I want to leapfrog the idea that the mobile app, the Fuji mobile app should work well. I want to leapfrog that and pose a question that's even, in my mind, a better question. And that is that why can't the Fuji mobile app just exist right here? Why is 2005 calling, wanting their menu system back? Um, why can't these beautiful touch screens and these high um, dot density LCDs uh, look a little less like this and a little more like this? Fuji and other brands, it's time. We need Lightroom Mobile. We need, or whatever it is, we need Fuji Raw Studio or Snapseed or whatever a robust imaging editing tool right here, and there's no reason not to do it. Yes, there is some JPEG editing ability here, um, but it's so rudimentary um, and, and silly when we have robust touchscreen um, and a design patterns that from here that give us um, all the examples we need to develop software that would work well here. If it's a software issue, embrace Android OS at the interface level or something. Um, I just don't understand why we can't get this experience here. Why is it so hard? An Instagram app. This is where 95% of photographers are sharing their images these days. Why can't we directly post from our camera? And why for the 0.5% of others that still use Flickr, why, why not post there? Why can't we trim video 
and export it directly to TikTok or whatever the cool kids are using these days right from our camera. Now, I don't know for a fact that if one of the camera manufacturers finally got this right and offered these sorts of things, that they would suddenly dominate the marketplace. But here's what I do know. When I watch my wife or I watch my sister who have both shot portraiture at the professional level and who both shoot with cameras worth as much as people's cars, when I see them with their family um, and they set down their expensive, professional camera and they pick up their phone instead to take a photo and share it instantly, it makes me crazy. The iPhone was created in 2007, Instagram created in 2010, 10 years later, and it's still a freaking pain in the butt to get a photo from here to here. This is a mind boggling failure that I just, I would have never predicted. As Fuji and others continue to bleed customers, I continue to wonder why they aren't taking the fight to the smartphones. Instead, they play leapfrog with Sony on features as the whole ship sinks. And that's, that's really a bummer to me. Um, I feel kind of strongly about this if you couldn't tell. This is the one thing that I've never understood. I think it's obvious why these are product manufacturers, designers, hardware manufacturers, they don't look at software, they don't quite understand it, um, but it's not a good excuse. Um, again, I just wanna reiterate, Fuji needs to stop trying to make their connection app, this thing, work better, and they need to build some of these features that people use every day into this if they want this to be the thing they use every day. It really is that simple. But that's all. As I said, I really love Fuji. Some of you will have watched this and not believe me, um, but to you I'd say go back and watch some of my other videos over the past four years, particularly my video where I talked about the reasons I love Fuji. And if you're looking to get into Fuji, look at some of my lens and body guides um, before you accuse me of being unfair or some sort of troll or hater. On the contrary, I'm trying to be unbiased and I'm trying to um, idealistically, again, recommend some things that Fuji could do to improve. But did I forget anything? What would you like to see Fuji change or improve? Let me know. And in the meantime, remember to do good with your camera and we'll talk to you again real soon.